Hey Siri, open garage door. Hey Siri, open trunk. I'm Frugal Tesla Guy, and I'm going to show you what's in this box. It's going to make opening and closing that trunk a whole lot easier. Automatic opening and closing frunks and trunks seem to be all the rage lately. So I did some research and came across a company called Handshow and was lucky enough to have an automatic opening and closing frunk sent to me. Now full disclosure, it was free of charge. And after having it installed by Larry Lee from the Bay Area, I was able to put it to the test. And after having it for a few days, I can honestly say it works flawlessly. But what about safety and security? Well, I was able to test out some of the more commonly asked questions and concerns. All right, I want to see how safe this is, especially if you have little ones running around, maybe putting their hands where they shouldn't be. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to close it and then I'm going to put my arm in there. Let's go ahead and get this closing. Okay. So what you see is it stops it. It certainly puts a little bit of pressure on there and as an adult, it doesn't hurt. However, as a child, I can see how it might startle them. It doesn't have a reverse mechanism just yet to where it actually goes back up. So again, it could startle a small child. All right, let's go ahead and open it back up. And what I'm gonna do is put my hand in there so it goes a little bit lower and see if it can latch. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it once again. Put my fingers in here. And again, no reverse mechanism, and it certainly puts some pressure on there. Doesn't hurt my hand, didn't hurt my arm, but again, a small child, it is going to alarm them, and most likely, you are going to get tears. So at this point, it's probably a good idea to make sure the little ones have their hands clear of the front opening when you're closing it. So now people might be wondering, you've got this emergency pull lever. This wasn't here before the automatic opening and closing front. So for security reasons, can someone just come up to the car, take this cover off, and then pull this lever to open it? Well, let's try. Pulled it once, pulled it twice. I've got my phone in my pocket. I've tried it with power on to the car, everything, and it will not open. So you can rest assured that no one can just come up to your car, pull the lever to open your front. So here's what's happened. It says right here, it activated. It wants to open, but it won't. So it's saying that it's unlatched. Give me all the warning signals. And then what happens if I put it in park? Let's see what happens. All right, now I'm gonna go outside. And you can see that it is open, but it is still latched. So it still has the safety feature to where it won't open while you're driving if it accidentally hits the button on the inside. So that know that it won't do that. But of course now it's open, I've got to close it. But good to know. Just how did I figure out how to press that button from the inside? Well, Brian from Iowa and Tesla had a really cool solution and that was that tube uh, that had the golf balls that went right into the button right there but I was actually getting pizza with my son tonight and we got the two liter bottle of soda and I thought wow this is perfect for this to kind of hit that I have to figure out a way to make that happen so what I did is I propped it up on this blanket here so then when, when I uh, put on the brakes abruptly it made it shoot forward and then hit the button so just kind of show you the insides of trying to get that experiment done. All 
All right, so let's go ahead and test it and see if the frunk will indeed open. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the widgets so I don't have to do anything here. Let's gonna load it up. Let's take a look. And it doesn't look like anything happened. I didn't get any kind of warning sign or anything like that going 15 miles per hour. Uh, let's turn over here. I'm gonna take it down to 10 miles per hour. Try opening the frunk. And nothing happened. Let's bring it down to, let's see if we can do it to five. Trying to open the frunk, nothing happened. Now we're just going at a super slow. Now you can see I'm going about two miles an hour. Still nothing. Now I'm going one. So even going one mile an hour, nothing is happening. Now I'm gonna get it up, I was up at 15. Let's take it to, I don't know, let's try it at 20. Nothing, I keep pushing the front to open. Nothing is happening. Let's bring it up to 25. All right, so I think it's safe to say that once you know you put it to the test here, from one to 25 miles per hour, it won't open. So it's only safe to assume that it is not going to go at any faster speed than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it to a complete stop. I am now officially in hold. Let's see if it'll open. It won't, oh, it said the front is unlatched. So it actually did open when I was in the park position, I'm not even in park, just in hold. So if I was at a stoplight and I accidentally, and I, let's see, ignore to continue to drive. I guess if I wanted to, but I couldn't do that at this point, could I? So now I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And now it's closed and I can go. So you don't have to be in park. You can, at least with the app, open the frunk while you're at a stoplight or at a stop sign and you're going zero miles per hour and in the hold position, it will open. Let's see if I'm not in the hold position and see if it opens. So I'm just kind of coasting here. I pretty much stopped at this point. I'm rolling backwards. Okay, as I'm slowly rolling backwards, it will not open. You've actually got to be, oh, now that I put it in hold, it actually is opening. So I have to push this to get it out, and then I have to close it again in order to progress and move forward. So that's kind of the safety feature. All right, so there you go. So if you are moving forward at all, one miles per hour or higher, it will not open, it will not activate. But if you are moving, even if you're rolling backwards, it will not open until the car is put in hold and then the, the frunk will actually open. So that's how the frunk works when the car is moving and not moving. So now we're inside the car. I'm gonna show you how you can open the frunk from inside the car and it's pretty much as you'd expect. You've got the open option here, so we'll push that, and it opens. But one thing you'll notice is grayed out and it says opened, so you don't have the option to close it, at least from the touch screen in the car. The only way you can do that is from your app, so I close the frunk from inside the car, but with my phone and from the app. So as far as I'm concerned, I think some people are gonna be a little uh, upset about that. I think there are gonna be some complaints about it. However, that being said, for me, for my purposes, I'm not too terribly concerned about it because most likely I'm gonna be opening and probably even closing the frunk from outside the car and most likely even using the button from inside the frunk. So you're outside the car, you've taken everything out of the frunk and now you wanna close it, but you don't have your phone handy and you of course can't close it from inside the car on the touch screen. So you have a simple way of doing that. And you simply push the button and it will close for you. Okay, so we are at my son's soccer game and there they are playing. It doesn't look like he's playing right now. He usually plays defense. I don't see him out there. 
I don't think our team is doing that great, but uh, they've done pretty well in the past. All right, so here's the soccer team. Here's his school. On the other side of those buildings is where the parking lot is. So what I wanted to show in this video is that you can indeed tell if the frunk is open or closed from the app. So I'm in the native app right now, and you can see by looking at it that the frunk is indeed closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. I'm gonna tap yes to confirm. And there's the animation there showing that the frunk is open, as you can clearly see. So the frunk has opened. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And I'm sure I do want to. And then the frunk will close, hopefully, right? And what it will do is that animation, that frunk will go from open, and eventually it will show that it is closed. So there you have it. Now it's showing that it's closed. So that's one of the cool things with this, uh, with the auto opening frunk and closing frunk is the fact that the app does indeed confirm if it's open or closed. Now back to the game. So now I wanna show you how it works with the phone. Now, of course, it will work with the key fob, so you can do that, and that can be a remote source, but your main remote, remote source is going to be your phone. So we'll start with the Tesla native app, and this is how it works. Within the home screen right here, you've got the frunk button right there. So you push that, and then it asks you if you're sure. You push yes, and then it opens it for you. You pretty much do the same thing. In fact, you do the same thing by pushing the front button. Once again, it gives you that confirmation. You have to push yes, and it will close it. Now, here's the thing. There are people who probably aren't gonna wanna push a button twice. They just wanna push one button. And you can do that with stats, but not necessarily within the app of stats, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to it. And the stats app does have the front button, but same thing here, it has a confirmation. But here's a cool thing, there's a way around that. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the widgets, and I've got Stats app, the top of my widgets, and below that, actually, I've got the Tesla app. Because I use the Stats app widgets a lot more than I do the native Tesla app. So here's a cool thing, right here in the frunk, there's a frunk button right there. You push it once, and that's it. You don't have to push any kind of confirmation and the same thing when you want to close it. So there it is, push the frunk, and it closes it for you. Now they also make an auto open and soft closing trunk, and Brian from i1 Tesla did a video highlighting that. I'll be sure to post a link to that video in the description below. Now onto what many of you might be asking, how much? Retail, the frunk and trunk are $500 each, but being the frugal Tesla guy, Brian and I worked together and were able to get you a great discount. Now, if you use my promo code, Tesla guy, you will get a 10% discount for a total of $450, including shipping. Now, Brian from I1 Tesla also has a code. And if you're a bigger fan of his and get a lot from his videos, then use his. Either way, be sure to use one of our codes to get the discount. So if you were to buy both at $500 each for a total of $1,000 with a 10% discount, it will cost you $900. And it will be an extra $45 after the 10% discount for a foot sensor under the trunk for a total of $945. But what if you're not very handy and wanna have it installed? Well, you're in luck if you live in a certain area. Right now, Handshow has partners in Los Angeles and the Bay Area. Now, since the trunk takes longer to install, it will cost a little bit more at $300 and $200 for the frunk. I'll leave information in the description below on how you can contact these people and make arrangements. I can tell you from personal experience that Larry Lee in the Bay Area is very professional and did an outstanding job with my car. He's very meticulous and makes sure everything is just right before he leaves. Now that all being said, if you are handy and would like to give self-installation a try, I will be posting a detailed instructional video for the frunk to help make it easier for you. Once again, as frugal Tesla guy, I have to ask myself, is it worth the expense? And my answer to that is simple. If you have the money, absolutely. 
As for me personally, my frugality allows me to splurge every once in a while. And this is something I would splurge on without a doubt. I think anyone who has spent any time with the original frunk knows that opening it is not a big deal. But closing the frunk is no fun, especially if you close it the way Tesla recommends. And now, I don't even think twice about using it. Now, I also recommend you do more research on Handshow. Check out their website and YouTube channel. On their channel, they have included other YouTubers who have tried their auto trunk and auto frunk. So don't just take my word for it. See what others have to say. Last but not least, let's try Siri commands one more time. Hey Siri, open garage door. Hey Siri, open front. Hey Siri, close front. Hey Siri, close garage door. Stay positively charged.